Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the restaurant table booking app video series and this is part 3. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Azure SQL server and the database in the Azure portal. And this will be our first cloud server that we will be using it. And if you don't want to use it, that's absolutely fine. You can watch and then later you can use the database which is from your local host itself. Come, let's get started. So this is the portal that you have to log in. And once you log in on the search, you can search SQL Server. Once you search SQL Server, you can see the options. And uh, here I'm already having a SQL Server. That's why it's showing up. But click on Create and then if you look at this, you're first going to create an SQL Server, not the SQL database, okay? So select the subscription, select the resource group, and in my case, I'll be using the new resource group. I'm gonna name it as the table booking RG. RG stands for resource group, and here you should give a unique name. It's okay, as and when you give, if this is not unique, it's gonna tell you, like I'm going to name it as LSC table booking, and it will be under the database.windows.net, well, you know, hosted domain. Now the location, and this is all simple stuff. I don't want it to use uh, first two options, like not the Azure AD uh, authentication. We'll go with the SQL authentication. So once you choose SQL authentication, here you need to provide the, the admin login and password. See, this is only for development purpose. Generally speaking, uh, these database servers are AD authenticated in the organization. Okay, so no one will have any password. Whoever, whichever service has access only, it will use it in the. So let's go to the next option, network. So network, this is like allow Azure service and resource to access that we can give it as later as yes. The this third setting is the additional settings. We are not going to use any defender. Like you know, we are not going to do any protection against the database for now. But that's what the version is called. And if you go to uh, the tag, you can give a name so you can track under which the resource has been used and the cost, right? And we are going to use the basic uh, version under the basics plan. So that's that's uh, going to cost us only five dollars. Uh, but this is server, so creating server is free, but creating a database is what is going to cost you. So once the deployment is done, you land on this page. This is the overview of the server. Now you can click on SQL database or you can come to the overview and click on create database. Both are same actually. It is going to take you to the same place, right? So this you can see the server name and all those um, you know subscription details and location details but let's create a database right so click on database see this is the new as of uh, we record in 2023 july all these things are in the right side populated it's telling us um, what is the cost of the database right so i'm going to give a database name this database name also comes under the same resource group now here is the place where you choose uh, get to choose what kind of uh, database that you want like I'm going for the basic, which is less demand, right? For us, it's enough. And uh, we can choose that as a development purpose. Okay, there are other options also, but they're all like costly. In organization, they will use it, but for us, it's not required. Right? Based on the heavy load, the, the number of CPU cores and all will be, the power, the power of the server will be increased, okay? Now for us, we don't need all those things. So we'll go with the, laser, the, the basic one, which is two uh, GB storage. And I'll choose this locally redundant. I'm not going to replicate this database anywhere else. We are not going to do any much uh, thing other than the app. So and then you see this add client IP. See, I will show you how to do this later. For now, we'll keep it as no, okay, or even yes. So basically, uh, like if I'm doing my system's IP is recorded. Okay, I'll show you shortly how it works. Uh, if if not, generally speaking, from local to the Azure database, you cannot connect. Okay, there's a restriction that you cannot connect to the, even though if you have a username password, you cannot connect unless uh, you you permit your IP to be in a load list. Now, we'll choose all these basic things. Let's go to the additional settings. We, we don't need, just keep everything uh, to its default values. We're going to create only a simple database for our purpose. So I'm just going to give some tag and I'm going to click on the review and create shortly. Okay, so once I finish this, go to review create. See, now the estimate shows what it is. That's the bare minimum amount that I have to pay per month. Okay, uh, but like I said, if you don't want to incur this cost, that's absolutely fine. You can go with the free version. Um, for 12 months, it is free. And then later you can change it or just go with your local database. Okay, 
but in order to learn Azure services, you need to know how to do this. Now, if you come to this connection string, there are two connection strings, right? The top one is for the passwordless connection string, service to service authentication, like the Active Directory authentication. But we need to know the SQL authentication, which is the second option. So I'm going to copy the second option. And during uh, we created the SQL server, we would have noted down our username and the admin password. I'm going to replace that password username and password there so what i'm going to do is here i'm going to put the server name right once i so here i'm going to put the server name and going to use the username password and try whether i'm able to connect to the sql server which is sitting in azure cloud okay so i pasted the server name and followed by the login name and then i'm going to copy the password put it here connect boom see this is what the error is Okay, what this error basically says is, in general, the public IP are not allowed. From a public endpoint to the Azure thing, it is not enabled, it is disabled. If you want to enable, you need to go to this SQL server. Okay, in the SQL server, there is some database sitting, right? So you are connecting to the particular database. So click on the database, uh, the SQL database, and there you need to configure the firewall rule. Okay, I'll show you how to configure the firewall rule. So go to the database. We went to this database and you see this search for firewall. There's something called set firewall rule. Here is the thing, public access is right now disabled. So once you select the selected network and click on add your IP address, and I'm gonna give this as my IP just for identification. If someone wants to try this database, you know, you need to find your IP and let me know. I can add it for temporary basis. So this IP is added and this IP is belongs to me. And uh, now I selected allow Azure services also to be accessed because later we'll be using the app service, right? See, now it's connected, you know, like I said, connecting from local to the Azure server is not permitted by default. You need to do all these things to gain access to uh, connect to the server. Now, once you do this, the database is there. There is no table because we haven't created any tables, right? Um, right, so what we are going to do is in the previous thing, you saw how to create, uh, we, we, we went through the tables details and uh, we saw how the table structures are working, right? So the script you would have executed in local, but this is how you execute this uh, script in the in Azure servers also. Uh, if we have uh, going to use the entity framework migration, then migration will take care of, uh, you know, accessing the database and creating the tables. But just for time being, I'm going to use the same script and run it so that the tables are created in the Azure SQL database, okay, which we are going to use it. And these are the shortcuts. So control N will give you a new query window. Control X will give you the full execution of the script. If you select a particular script and do a control X, it's going to execute only that particular script. Okay. And um, so these are the shortcuts as and when we go through it, you will get to see the shortcuts. All right. So what else? I'm going to cut this and put it in the main script. So the main script is what I'm going to share with you. All right. So we have all these shortcuts recorded. Now let's see what happens. Let's refresh this database and you should see those tables coming up here. Great. It's loading. All right, we have six tables recorded. And now if I just uh, install the, I mean, the insert the sample data, all these records are going to get inserted into the respective tables. And finally, when we run the query, we should be able to see the data that we saw in the previous video. Okay, the only difference is we are going to do this in Azure SQL database. And we're going to use this from our uh, web API, which is going to be in the next video. See, you got the data. This data is same as what you saw in the previous video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you like this. And this is the first cloud service that we are going to use in our series. And as and when we go, we will use it in the right places. And um, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section and follow my video series. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!